In the past, I feel like I have purchased so many different planners to try to customize it to my lifestyle and the needs that I had. And how many times have you run into the problem that a planner either doesn't have enough of what you need it to do, or it has too many things of things that you absolutely have no need for. I've purchased planners that have been expensive and I've purchased planners that have been more affordable. And in any case, I have never been able to find something that could do it all. And so I set out to find a solution for this and in December, you know how YouTube works, all of a sudden it knows exactly what your question is and it starts to cue different videos to your attention. I clicked on a bullet journal video and all of a sudden it's 3 a.m. and I've been sucked into the vortex of learning about this new topic. It turned out it was just a blank canvas, a blank notebook. Could this be the planner that was going to solve all of the problems? So I set out to find the answer to that question. Right from the beginning, I told myself, this journal for this year is going to be a rough draft. So give yourself the permission to play, to erase, to reorganize, and to reassess after every month that passes. My reflection after this month has been, I absolutely love it. And I'll share very quickly with you some of the things that I have loved. There have been trackers that I've used, like a tracker that tracks my sleep, correlated to my stress, correlated to my mood. And tracking those on a day-to-day -day basis has given me given me so much information, right? Collecting analytics, cre uh, collecting the um, patterns of what's going on, and then being able to see, huh, I hadn't take notice of that. As I've been able to study these graphs, they've risen questions as I'm reflecting at the end of the month. There's questions being brought up, could this be something that is affecting my health? Could this be why X, Y, and Z? Huh, I noticed that I wasn't sleeping, uh, I wasn't on track with my sleeping on the weekends. Things that we can bypass from day to day. And as we look at it in a whole, we're able to clearly see these numbers being brought up and actually giving you the opportunity to ask questions that you weren't asking before. And I don't know where I heard this from through one avenue avenue or the other. I read lots of books and listened to lots of podcasts, watched lots of videos, but I remember someone saying, you can't find the right answer if you're asking the wrong questions. And how many times have we asked these questions and there is no solution? But until we're given a different perspective, our questions shift or we begin to ask a completely different question that will then give us a solution to the problems that we're facing. So that's been like, a huge eye-opener for me to track my sleep stress slash mood tracker. I've also had a habit tracker, so I've been able to see what I've been prioritizing in the month and what I, what I really didn't take focus of. And that has given me the opportunity to then look at those patterns and reassess and reevaluate. And there has been a... Um, uh, I guess a conclusion of mine where there's some that I've completely eliminated and there's some that I did great and that I'd like to carry into the month of February. And there are uh, others that I took notice that I said it was a priority, but I wasn't doing it clearly as I've taken inventory of what I did from a day-to-day -day basis. That's the second one. The third thing that I've absolutely loved is that I've used my weekly spreads to really play with. There was one week where I used it to track just my journaling, if you will. At the end of the day, I had a little section that I would go back and kind of recap my day. This could have been a question that I had, something that I was wrestling with, perhaps just taking inventory of what happened during that day, good or bad. And that was so, it kept me coming back every single day for more to have a space to uh, journal about those things. Then there was a week where I tried to take more checklist inventory. So I tried to have my nutrition tracker and my to-do list and things that were a little bit more meticulous, if you will, in an itinerary type of setting. And I noticed that that was the week where I didn't really want to even go to my journal or open it and it seemed very boring to me. So quickly I saw what worked and what didn't. And I'm taking that information with me to be able to apply 
in February how I would want to, I guess, redefine the way, the order, the spreads that I laid out in the month of January. But the thing that I loved most was having that space to journal. It seems kind of, what's the word? It can seem a little silly. I've always tried to be somebody who would fall in love with journaling, but something about opening up a notebook and seeing a whole blank page has always been for some reason or the other intimidating and I have no idea what to write. But for whatever reason, when I had more of a spread from Monday or Sunday rather to Saturday, I had this little space where I could go back and recap. And as I've gone along, it has been so rewarding to go back and see what happened every single day, right? Because I'm also able to look at the analytics of the graphs that I've set up and say, hey, you know what? I had high stress that day. What happened on the days around there? And how many times have you or I been asked, what did you do on Tuesday? You really have to stop and think about things that we can so quickly kind of pass by. But because I had this journal, I was able to go back and see the events of that day and have things click as far as being able to kind of um, analyze those with my analytics, but also just recapping and taking inventory of what's actually going on in my life. What am I really prioritizing and what are the struggles that I've been having? What are the peaks and the successes? It's been nice to go back and see what has been going on in your life. And so that's something that I've found so fun and rewarding and it keeps me coming back for more. So that has been a little bit about how excited I am about journaling. I'll share with you just a few tips that have helped me. The first thing has been, I've picked up index cards to brain dump everything that I do want to keep going into the following month. On these index cards, I have created the little squares to represent each page and what organization I would like to place them in. Once I feel like I've redefined in that brainstorming process, I get one index card and wrote out from one, two, three, and on of the forms and the spreads that I would like to have in what order. After doing that, what I've done is I've gotten post-it notes and placing the post-it notes with every single title of the spread that I wanna have has been placed into my journal page by page. And this gives me a realistic view of being able to see whether or not I feel comfortable with the organization and the flow of these pages. So that has been so helpful because it's unlike digital journaling where you are so simply able to grab a page and reorganize and restructure and be able to kind of move them around, pen and paper is a little bit more permanent. And so you're not able to mm, redefine or recreate your organization until the following month, which is what happened in January. However, something as low tech as post-its has been able to let me flip through the pages and see, is this the type of order that feels like it best flows, the path of least resistance. It feels natural, it feels good. The next thing is a pencil, a pencil. I'm able to go in there and really sketch out the way I want everything to look and then going back in there with pen to solidify that organization. And finally, white out. Even though you've tried to prepare as best as you can, there's going to be little mistakes along the way. And you got to give yourself the flexibility to be able to just go in there and take a white out. As I continue on re, I guess, structuring as the months go, it's nice to have the flexibility of seeing what's worked and what hasn't. And so, When in doubt or when you've made a mistake, whiteout will be your best friend. Let me know if bullet journaling is something that you do or if it's something that you might want to implement into your lifestyle. What I've loved best is that flexibility of 
Not only did it intimidate me in the beginning, but the fact that it's a blank canvas, you have that flexibility to really customize it to your personal lifestyle. I hope that this video has been helpful to you and has provided you with a few tips. If these videos are interesting to you, I'd love to show you every month as I go along this year how I continue to restructure the different spreads that I have. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that interests you. All right, well, I'll talk to you soon.